98 FM. The sound of the city. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10 a.m. with Adrian Kennedy. Are you a mammy? Because if you are, I want to talk to you on 6797981. Because a new report out today. Uh, as people, well, Jeremy, what uh, is this report saying? That uh, well, it's Irish an, mammies are ruining their boys. Yes, this is, is it a, just boys. Yes, and, and it specifically uh, just points out boys. Why do you have a listen to this? I want you to listen very closely to this. Uh, an American woman living in Ireland has penned a letter to Irish mammies in which she's quite critical of the way they go on. And here's what she says. So if you were an Irish mammy, I want you to have a listen to this because this is you that she is talking about, okay? She says, uh, to me... As an American woman in Ireland, Irish men never grow up. Excuse me while I try to distinguish between a 12-year-old boy and the grown man you're supposed to be. And my many encounters with Irish men have confirmed my doubts that Irish men are in fact boys. They may look like men on the outside, but underneath it all, they're a bunch of spoilt, rotten teenagers looking for a woman who be their mammy. On a recent shopping ex- excursion, I met an Irish mother of 55 She had ruined her own son by doing everything for him. Laundry, cooking for him, even buying his own bloody shirts. Now, geez, I don't know, how many mothers buy their their young fellas' shirts? I'm sure there are some. I wouldn't wear any clothes my mother bought me. Uh, Irish mammies are always uh, being critical of their own daughters, but they place their sons on a higher pedestal, catering to their every whim. The Irish mammy will wash for their son. They will do everything for their son. Their little son is an angel who never grows up. American men, she says, on the other hand, accept responsibility for their actions. I've never heard of an American man in his late 20s running to his mother with his laundry once a week or showing up <laughs> or showing up at the house expecting to be fed by his doting mama. You Irish <laughs> mammies are ruining your son. Sorry, I'm laughing because... Yes. Until very recently, you let's were that. Not, so- let's not make no, this no, no, personal. No. Yeah, let's make it personal. Until very recently, you used to go to your own mother with washing. Is that not right? Is that right? Yes, because I did. you're not alone. This is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, up, up you- until a year ago, up until my wife uh, demanded that this stop, I used to bring a bag of washing to my mother's every week. But I have a reason for it. I'm not going to get into it, but I have a reason. And my mother used to do my washing, and uh, I'd get it back the next day within 24 hours, and it'd be all earned. I am. I will admit. You uh, are. T- uh, I am a, a the product- stereotypical mammy's yes, boy. Yes, I am the product of. Of an Irish mammy. My mammy is the most Irish mammy uh, that you can meet. Mm. Down to when I lived at home, uh, every morning I would get a a fresh glass of orange juice beside my bed. I would wake up, uh, or if I was working late at night, remember I used to work late at night? When I got home, there would be a hot water bottle in my bed placed there (laughs) for my mother. And I wouldn't have it any other way. But this American woman, she is is kind of right. What she's saying is, uh, Irish men badly need to grow up, uh, and Irish mammies have ruined us. Michelle, you have... Oh, by the way, I'd love to hear from you on 6797981. Michelle, you've two sons uh, living at home. What ages are they? They are 30 and 32. Okay, okay right. They're 30 <laughs> and 32. Yes. And it says on my screen here that you do everything for them. I do everything. I cook for them. I clean, change their beds. Um, have you, a nice meal for them when they come in in the evening. Do you, now, do you, give, do you give them freshly squeezed orange juice every morning? I do, every morning, okay. yeah. Now, my mother used to do something very special, Michelle, uh, and that's why I didn't move out of house until I was 40. Um, she used to strain the, strain the orange juice so I wouldn't get the little bits of orange in it. Do you do that for your sons? <laughs> no, I don't. But if they were out the night before and if they had a friend staying, I would bring them up fresh orange juice and um, a rasher sandwich. Oh, there's a mother. In the morning. But uh, sorry, hang on for one second, Michelle. Uh, 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 <laughs> these sons of yours aren't sixteen and eighteen, are they? No, thirteen, thirty-two. No wonder they haven't moved out yet. So, do you get a yeah. rasher sandwich from your missus in the morning? No, I, no, certainly, do I certainly do not. I certainly do not. You see, okay, we we read in the news the other day that the average age for people moving out of the family home is about twenty-six. Isn't Tw- that twenty-seven point five? Something I think. like that. Yeah. 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 Um, so your uh, two sons are way above the average age for moving out of uh, out of the mammy's house. Um, could you? Can you ever see them leaving? 
Um, and the reason I'm saying that is it's a little bit sad at 30 and 32 to be living at home with your mammy still, isn't it? But they're actually, they're both saving for a deposit for their house. Yeah, but that's not even the issue, Adrian. The issue isn't how long you should live in your home for, because in fairness, if Michelle was my mother, I'd be still living with her now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Michelle, why, okay, why do you do pretty much, I mean, it sounds like you're only short of wiping their arse. Uh, why do you do everything for these men? Because I just have two two boys. I only have the two boys. No, that, that, that wasn't his question. His question was, why do you do everything for these grown men? It's not like they're teenagers. No, but they're working. And, you know, I'm here all day during the day. And it's nice to have something for them when they come in in the evening and okay. do their washing. Now, and how, their ironing, the whole lot. Okay, how do you think you're setting them up for being in the big bad world all by their own? Here, they're not 15, Adrian. They're but in they, the big bad here, world. They're being treated like 15-year-olds. My point is, how will they survive? Say they, they both move out in the next year or two. They get their mm. own places mm. and everything yes. else. Yes, yeah. yes. How will they be able to cook? How will they be able to iron? How will they be able to do their washing? How will they survive? I'll give them a crash course before they go. The The point is, Michelle, and we don't want to be too critical. Uh, I think you're brilliant, by the way. I think you are the, the what's the word, the stereotypical Irish mammy. Um, but the problem here, Michelle, are both of these men in relationships? They are. The women that, no, I don't know the women that your sons are dating, but the problem mm. here is, that the women that your sons are dating are never going to be able to match up to the expectations that you have set. In other words, my missus can't cook as good as my mother. Nobody will ever cook as good as my mother. Um, and you set just such a high standard that they are going to expect... I remember when I first moved out of the house uh, yeah. and, and moved in with my missus. I was expecting... No, nay, demanding a glass of orange juice every morning. And my wife told me to F off. And she's right. She says, you don't live with your mother yeah. anymore. I'm, and that's the point I'm going to make. When they move out, they are going to expect bacon butty sandwiches, which sounds lovely, by it the does, way. It does. They're going to expect that every morning from their wives. And the wives Oh, no, that's only, that's only in, the mor that's in the morning if they have been out the night before. Oh, it's only... Yeah, yeah, oh, it's, ha it's hangover food. It's hangover food. <laughs> but in the morning, I have their, um, the table set and everything set out for them to have in their breakfast in the morning. And if they're going early, they don't get a fry. But if they're not going early, I'll be up and have do a grill for them. Okay, here's a text message for you, Michelle. Do uh, do that woman's sons know how to use a washing machine? Um, no, no. Would one of them, 32-year-old, he does. Jeez, he's 32 I, and he I, knows I, how to use a washing machine. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. I, I, I actually moved out of home myself when I was 18. Mm. So, do you not find it... Okay, you moved out when you were 18. Do you mm. not find it then a little bit odd that your lads are still there at 30 and 32? I know, but sure, what can you do? Kick them out. <laughs> you can't kick them out when they're uh, saving for a mortgage. And Yeah, no, and this isn't about kicking your kids out, but what it is about is... And there's absolutely no shame in living at home, by the way, if you're 30 or 32. There is no shame. That's not the issue here, Adrian. The issue mm. is, Michelle, while they are under your roof, yeah... Yeah. You need to, what this woman is saying is, you need to teach them to be independent men. Like, what happens when you go away on holidays? Say the house like the a laundry. kid. The laundress. And how do they feed themselves? Um, Takeaways. Their partners would probably stay and cook for them. You see, I have to say, you're making them sound worse by the second, Michelle. <laughs> I think I should go now before <laughs> I'm digging a hole. Before I dig a hole, in no, no, keep digging the holes. Brilliant, keep digging, keep digging. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I, think I know I here, here's my point that how sad is that that at thirty and thirty two you have to have the girlfriend over to make your dinner when your mammy's away? Well, they might go to her then for the, their dinner and whatever. Mm. Stay there for a second, Michelle. Our telephone number is 6797981. You can text or WhatsApp the programme on 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. Somebody just texted in to say, that's crazy. Considering how, move, uh, how many move out of their home at 18... Uh, with the average being 27... I don't know anybody that moves out of their family home no, at 18. Loads of students move out. Go off to college. Oh, they're country people. Dublin lads don't move out of the house at 18. The average age is 27, so that probably means that there are a lot of people 40 plus still living at home with a mammy. And it's true. 
Here's what this uh, American woman is saying again. She's saying that uh, Irish men badly need to grow up and that Irish mammies are ruining uh, the men. She says, uh, the, I cannot distinguish between a 12-year-old boy and a grown-up man. Um, Irish men are boys. They may look like men on the outside, but underneath it, they're a bunch of spoiled, rotten teenagers looking for a woman to play mammy. Um, on a recent shopping excursion, I met an Irish mother of 55 who admitted that she ruined her son by doing everything for him. She bought his clothes, she cooked for him, she did his laundry for him. Irish mothers uh, placed their sons on high pedestals, catering to their every whim, whereas American men, on the other hand, act responsibly for their actions. I've never heard of an American man in his late 20s running to his mother with the laundry once a week <laughs> or going over for a feast when he's hungry. Uh, she basically thinks that Irish men have no independence. Okay, are you somebody who is a mammy's boy? Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. Are you a mammy's boy? Who's going to admit to that? I am, but I wouldn't admit but to you, it. But you did admit to it. You uh, did admit to it. Until recently you were bringing your washing over to your mother. I mean, I just found that... There's a reason why I brought it to her. Why? Because she has a washing line. We don't have a washing line. It's impossible. Do you know what it, when you don't have a washing line how difficult it is to dry clothes in damp weather? You just get a dryer. No. Have a, no. Get a dryer. No. That's what everybody in, in little tin boxes do. <laughs> it's a cardboard box. Oh, it's a cardboard box. Yvette, you're on 98FM. How are you, Yvette? Hi, how are you? Now, Yvette, you're, <laughs> you're going to go out of your way to ensure that your son is not a mammy's boy. Yeah, every girl is going to love my son. He can cook, he cleans, he knows how to use the washing machine, the dishwasher, he hoovers, he tidies his room. He gets his pocket money for it, but he does it. Fair play. Some so girl you... is going to be delighted. I swear to God, some, that's what I said, I wouldn't have any girl running after him when he gets older. And you see, the, this is the problem. It, it seems so sexist now. Uh, you know, men moving out of Mammy's house and expecting his new wife to do everything for him like Mammy used to do. Yeah, uh, my husband is spoiled. I have my husband ruined. I do everything. And I swear to God, my son will not have to do that. He can do his own stuff, I mean, like his wife or girlfriend or whatever won't have to do it for him. Right, he be tell you what, what can a 14-year-old cook? My God, I could, I could barely make... Uh, he makes, oh, he makes a mean spaghetti bolognese and lasagna. He can do anything, breakfast, scrambled egg, fry, anything, you name it, he can do it. I really don't play to him. And all. Yeah, you just teach him, he does it, yeah, he's real interested in it as well. I mean, hold on, making a bit of scrambled egg doesn't make him Gordon Ramsay now. No, Black, but he's yeah, able, he's able to do it. But he makes a mean spaghetti bolognese, you know, he, he can cook a dinner and he can cook a breakfast and all that kind of thing. He cleans up after him, he does all that dishwasher. He knows what set to put the clothes on in the washing machine. He knows how to use the dryer. But I'm, ta I'm taking it that there's a bit of a generation gap between you and Michelle. Is there? Michelle is probably a different generation. Well, obviously, she's got 30 and 32-year-old sons. Yeah, well, I'm 42, so I don't know what I don't know age Michelle is. But, um, no, when I, when I met my husband now, he would have he would have done stuff at the start. But I just did everything, I suppose, and it's just gone on since that. Like So, yeah, it was just my own fault, really. I shouldn't have done it, but... I think it's just expected now in my house, you know. So if you, sorry, if you <laughs> if you left your husband tomorrow, God forbid. I'm not wishing that, by the way. But if if you <laughs> come on, why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, that's that was that's the question. Like, no, if you <laughs> left him, <laughs> if you left him tomorrow and said you're going, uh, I'm not saying you, you divorce him, by the way. If you left him and saying you're going to Barcelona for two weeks with the girls, how would he survive? He wouldn't. I'd have to bring the kids with me. They wouldn't survive. You know, he'd have to go down and live with his mommy for a couple of weeks. Like, does your husband buy his own clothes? Oh, yeah, he's well able to do that. Like, he earns his money, he works, and he buys his own clothes. He does that, like, but as we're gardening in the house now. But if, a I, disaster I, but if I if I was in your house and I told your husband to put on a delicate wash at thirty degrees for half an hour, what would <laughs> my husband my husband's a dry cleaner? Oh, oh dry really? <laughs> that's what he actually works at. <laughs> he can do it at work, but he won't do it at home. Oh, that's I hilarious! Swear. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's stay there for one. <laughs> okay, your son, he's fourteen now. You reckon he's going to be a great catch for any young one uh, in the years to come? 100%. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I think that is a great catch because no woman wants to to take up where Mammy left off, Mammy, yeah, mammy I, and yeah. a, a young fellow. Even though even though we're all about equality nowadays, though, um, Yvette, I think a woman still want, a woman doesn't want a man who's completely domesticated. Women don't want men like that. I think they do. Well, so, there might be still a lot of 
yeah, there might be some out there. Like you know, I wouldn't mind it now. Sometimes. Sorry, do you do you think you know? David Beckham knows to put a knows to put a knows how to put a wash on? No, he, he probably does. No, no but he, 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 no, he hates people to do it. He yeah, can pay people he can afford to. to. He can afford that. No, yeah, but yeah. my belief is that women want an alpha male. To an extent. An yeah. alpha male is able to cook more than a tin of beans. Uh, I have four boys from age 12 to 2, and where my 12-year-old can do everything for himself, my 9-year-old would nearly have to be spoon-fed at 9. Mary, your husband was mammied at home, and you basically took over from his mother. Yeah, I did, 100%. My husband doesn't as much as put a spoon in the dishwasher. He's just a lazy git, is he? Um, no, he probably he gets away with it. So. Well, actually, yeah, you see, yeah, so I, you, I, you, sorry, you've become a mammy to him as well. Well, can I pull you both yeah. up on that? It's actually very complicated putting cutlery in dishwashers. Boy, what's complicated about it? You just drop it in the basket. No, well, I don't have a dishwasher, but there's a dishwasher in our job here, Mary, in 98FM, and I didn't realise this because I've never had a dishwasher at home. Who doesn't have a dishwasher? Well, I married one, but uh, uh, anyway. Hey, she's listening, by the way. She is. There's only certain places where you can put cutlery in a dishwasher. Yeah, he, yeah would, in the he would drive me crazy if he tried to, to fill it because he wouldn't do it right. Sorry, lads. So well, there's, there's nothing complicated about filling a dishwasher. There is, you have to there turn plates. Yeah, to yeah there is. Things. But I'm a, I'm a stay-at-home wife, so I kind of see it as my job to do all the things. Oh, right, okay. Um, yeah, I know, but you've left him... God forbid you were to... I've left him for a weekend before and... He's gone to his mammy for food. <laughs> really? He can't cook either. But okay, say, and God forbid, in the future, Mary, if you were to, to pass away before him, he's screwed. Oh, he'd, be, he'd, he'd have to go to a home. Yeah. He wouldn't survive. <laughs> that's my point. I mean, you, we do to, need... go off and try and marry some young one, but he wouldn't survive. Sorry, that sounds like a great life, going off to a home where you're, where you're spoon-fed every day. You know, that's great. <laughs> um, and one last call. Sorry, Mary, to cut across because I'm actually out of time. Angela, you're the complete opposite. You were the one that was mammied. Yeah, how are you drinking? So you, you had no clue when you came out into the big bad world? Well, I had a clue. It was, I, I was, it was always done for me and my brother. There's three years into this, I'm 27, he's 24. So when I then moved in with my boyfriend, he was actually mammied as well. Right, but so he was he able to like, do more stuff than you were, was he? Yeah, we had like a week or two of a day in case I like, was going to start doing this stuff. So he does all the drying, he does all the washing. God, you're lucky with him, it has to be said. Thank you, Angela. Uh, thank you, all of you, for your calls. I'm sorry we're out of time. 98FM. The sound of the city. 98FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10am. With Adrian.